Hi everyone, my name is Rubes Chong. Hi, and I'm Pedro Reynolds Cuellar. And we're graduate students at the MIT Media Lab Center for Civic Media. Together we wrote a paper called Coffee Farms as Design Labs, Manifesting Equity by Design Principles into Practice. This paper is a critical examination and reflection of a co-design collaboration with coffee farming communities in Colombia in January 2019. In the recent years, design research as a field has become more concerned with inclusive design practices and as such, we have seen the rise in popularity of co-design, participatory design and community-based design practices. While well, while intention, many of these design practices do reinforce colonial power structures and discourses. This paper serves as a retrospective examination of the power dynamics at play during our month-long collaboration with coffee farmers in the Fusagasuga region of Colombia, with the intention of offering a new framework for future researchers to assess and design equitable bottom-up collaborations. The key goal of the collaboration was to interrogate the extent to which coffee farmers could function as design labs for experimentation, collaboration and innovation. While we do not claim to have all the answers, in what follows, we article our lessons learned in navigating unequal power dynamics inherent in our work. In particular, we ask the following questions. What does co-design across fields, cultures and geographies look like in practice? To what extent can we mitigate power inequalities in co-design? And how can we manifest equity values in each step of our design process? To explore these questions, we work with two coffee farms, De Finca and Epranat, in the Fusagasuga region of Colombia. We brought together 16 design, engineering and business students from North and South America to work along alongside these farmers. De Finca and Epranat are both small-scale, community-owned coffee farms that grow, harvest, process, and package coffee beans. They have relied on locally designed technologies meant for small-scale production for years. However, many of these farmers were beginning to explore new ways to scale their businesses while bypassing the country's National Coffee Federation. The federation serves as a middleman between the, coffee, the farmers and, and cafes and consumers in the city. Farmers are often underpaid for their beans due to the lack of equipment, machinery and processes to harvest and produce a consistent high quality of beans. As such, the CENOVA Innovation Centre for Appropriate Technologies in Colombia began a partnership with the farmers in 2017 to bring together a diverse set of people and skills to co-produce co coffee. The month-long collaboration had three key aims. One, to improve coffee production technologies. Two, to develop a strong social organization with each of the farming communities to provide counterbalance to the National Federation of Coffee. And the third, to design a brand campaign to bridge the gap between rural coffee farmers and urban consumers. The collaboration culminated in a co-design immersive course that was divided into three different stages. Contextualization, immersion, and co-production. Each stage was composed by activities looking at progressively building up students' understanding of the small-scale coffee production industry in the region where our members were located, as well as providing them with first-hand exposure to coffee production processes from within the farms themselves. From a design practice perspective, the goals of the course were to introduce participants to a co-design methodology build solutions along with coffee farmers, and deliver prototypes in three domains, technology, marketing, and social organizing. From a design philosophy perspective, the course asks the questions, where are the sites for design that we recognize and honor? How might we approach analyzing a program from an equity lens? Using these pillars, the course seeks to provide insight into how to approach these questions, building from a concrete case of immersive co-design practice. Methods used during these stages were inspired by the participatory action, action research and creative capacity building frameworks. These methods help students navigate through the co-design and co-production of eight different projects across the three aforementioned goals. The collaboration with the De Finca farm resulted in four projects. One, a coffee cooling system and a smoke extractor module for a locally developed coffee roaster. Second, a marketing strategy for the De Finca brand 
in, a two, in two well-established digital marketplaces along with an accompanying website. Three, the design and implementation of a series of trainings for holding community meetings at the cooperative, and four, tools for improving financial management at farms and the recruitment of new farmers into the cooperative. The outcome of the collaboration with the Abrenet farmers also resulted in four projects. One, an artificial beehive and sensor kit for beekeeping of angel bees, along with a cartography for a touristic bee route. Two, a prototype for a press for honey extraction from honeycombs. Three, mobile point of sale stations for the farm, along with branding and marketing materials. And four, a bamboo-based vertical garden. One of our key contributions to the field is a post-colonial framework of co-design that works through the tensions between local and academic knowledge by decentering the ivory tower at sites of knowledge production and turning coffee farms into localities of knowledge and technology production. Beyond inclusive design, we aim to build equity-driven design framework that provides space for farmers to imagine, design and build their own futures. By taking students of elite institutions out of their comfort zones and situating them in new contexts, we hope to inverse the power hierarchy between farmers and students, building new relationships where actual co-production of knowledge can flourish. In order to mitigate these power dynamics, we turn to the Design by Equity framework. The framework seeks to provide a scaffold to bridge the gap between design methodologies and societal inequalities by retrofitting the traditional design thinking framework with an equity-centered lens, it aims to enable designers to question their subjectivities while keeping beneficiaries at the center of the design process. The framework's pillars philosophies are learning to see, where historical context matters, be seen by means of radical inclusion, and foresee seeing process as a product. These philosophies are then embodied in five design principles. One, design at the margins, where design happens as genuine communality, allowing for collective responsibility and innovative solutions between those who are privileged and those who have been marginalized to emerge. Two, start with yourself, a call to surface and be aware of our identities and biases. Three, seed power, asking us to revise how power is distributed, what dynamics it creates, and how we can seed it when appropriate. Make the invisible visible by surfacing hegemonic constructs, biases, and all other relevant intersections. And five, speak to the future. Without a history of equity, we are called upon forging a future built on different premises. To learn more about this work, you can refer to Christine Ortiz's work on leveraging identity development in the creation of an anti-racist, equitable design thinking process. We use the Equity by Design framework as a retrospective lens to analyze our course. Here is what we found. With regards to design at the margins, the course approached the principle by living and working alongside coffee farmer collectives, reversing the equation of the privileged being the educators and the underprivileged the learners. Ultimately, by framing coffee farms as design labs, we acknowledge the centrality of the self-determination project of these farmers associations. With regards to start with yourself, although in practice the course structure supported the surfacing of identities, biases, and power dynamics, it lacked an explicit acknowledgement of historical and present intersectionalities, especially in the territories where farms were located. Moreover, it failed in intentionally inviting students to reflect on their own identities, biases, and power dynamics, and how those could come into play in the context of the course. With regards to seed power, the course sought to emphasize the centrality of local knowledge as the major source of power over academic knowledge. Ultimately, by legitimating the right to autonomy, 
the course takes a clear stance on this. We must, though, recognize that the ample use of English among participants and our failure to account for this language barrier bec became a way in which power manifested. With regards to make the invisible visible, there's two traditionally invisible dynamics that were surfaced throughout the course. First, a complex relationship between coffee farmers and Colombia's National Coffee Federation, a dynamic that revealed a hegemonic, dominant, and sometimes coercive relationship. Second, the divide between the urban and the rural worlds reflected in a gap of knowledge from urban citizens about the struggles of their rural counterparts. It is to be said that many other intricate dynamics are to be made visible. The course still has significant ground to cover in this regard. Finally, in terms of speaking to the future, we felt this was the principle that the course fell shorter. First, most of the narrative and focus of the course gravitated around the challenges of the past and the present. Although this decision is based on the intentions of our community partners, we recognize it is possible to honor this decision and still make space for future visioning. Second, we also recognize that the course still retains a heavy influence of language related to design that traces back to dominant views of the world. Based on this analysis, we now propose potential modifications to the equity by design framework to further equity drive design practice. Design at the margins without over glorifying design. We call to recognize that although powerful as a tool for change, design cannot exist in a vacuum. It requires trends and anti-disciplinary connections to succeed. Start with yourself and build relationships to build on self-reflection, to externalize one's realizations and use them as bonding material. Seed and redirect power. Beyond seeding power by acknowledging and neutralizing ways in which language can exclude, we can further redirect power. For example, by leveraging perceptions of institutional power from universities involved in the course and using them as a springboard to access relationships and resources. Make the invisible visible by listening to community wisdom, by which we mean the need to center communities' history and practice-based experience when unpacking complex dynamics. Who is centered when speaking the unspoken is as vital as the revealing itself. And finally, speak to the near and far future. We interrogate the impact of the difference and how time is perceived in different contexts, as well as the role of temporality when engaging in co-design collaborations. By nesting temporality under a future, we run at risk of failing to account for short-sightedness in these joint efforts and clearly define the lifetime of projects. This is an important variable, particularly for local partners. By studying co-design through an equity lens, we propose new ways to practice justice-centered post-colonial design practices. This is difficult work and requires commitment, time, and intentionality in building mutual trust with communities we're working with. It also requires a move away from the oversimplification, reduction and corporate co-opting of design. For future designers looking to carry out equity-driven co-design collaborations, we offer the following three practical takeaways. One, to decolonize design as a practice by recentering local knowledges and practices. Two, to develop genuine and long-lasting relationships and partnerships with the communities. And three, to build immersive experiences for all participants, whether they are students, non-profit partners, or the local communities themselves. All right, finally, we want to thank our community partners for their openness and the opportunity to let us learn from them. And we look forward to hearing feedback and any thoughts and comments are all welcome. Thank you and take care. Thank you.